Welcome to the homework for lesson three. This is module seven of third grade. Please write your name first. Use the RDW process to solve the problems below. That stands for read, draw, and write. Use a letter to represent the unknown in each problem. Jerry pours 86 millimeters of water, milli, milliliters of water into eight tiny beakers. He measures an equal amount of water into the first seven beakers. He pours the remaining water into the eighth beaker. That one measures 16 milliliters. How many, many milliliters of water are in the first seven beakers? So reading it isn't just reading it, but what we have is you want to summarize it too to make sure you really understand what you have to do. Uh, he's got eight tiny beakers. He's pouring water into them. The last one is 16, and the rest of them are all equal amounts. So we could do it. This, this could be a two-step thing where we have to figure out what's what was the amount he poured into the the total amount he poured into the seven beakers we could subtract the 16 from the 86 right and the, that's going to be mentally you might see that it's pretty easy to subtract that would be 70 and that's really easy to figure out that there'd be 10 and you could do the whole thing in your head really the numbers are very easy to work with but we have to show our mental math so you have to draw a picture in my picture I'm just gonna draw you could draw a math picture where you had draw the beakers or you could draw a tape diagram I like to draw tape diagrams are really easy but once in a while I want to draw a math picture one two three four five six seven eight a lot of times for two-step problems math pictures work out to be a little bit easier to work with sometimes so let's see six the last one is 16 and then all of these Oh, we've done the math in our heads we know that's going to be 70 but what we do know at the beginning is that this whole thing is 86 alright so there's our picture and now we need to use a letter to represent the unknown so first we need to find out this is going to be the, the total we'll call that T of the seven beakers so T equals the 86 minus the 16 and then we have to find out B how much is in each beaker right I should do this too So B equals 70 divided by 7. B equals 10. And you could have also figured this out by guessing and checking. Uh, you know, guess if, what if B is 5, right? So you could guess that 5 is not going to be enough because 7 fives is only. 35 it's not 70 and that might give you a clue if you know what half of 70 is and then you could just guess always guess twos fives and tens because they're just easier to skip count and then you could guess tens oh 70 yeah it works okay so uh each beaker has 10 milliliters. Mr. Chavez's third graders go to gym class at 11.15. Students rotate through three activities for eight minutes each. 
Lunch begins at noon. How many students are there? How many no? How many minutes are there between the end of gym activities and the beginning of lunch? We're going to need a timeline for this for our picture, and we could do. Here we go. Start at eleven and ended at twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock is lunch. And we know that's eleven fifteen. And that's when gym class starts. G for gym. Now if you're in the habit of marking every five minute or every single minute intervals all the way in your number line, you can do that and then you can just count everything up. That will absolutely work for this. Um, but I can't do that because then this video will just take way too long. So I'm going to make a few shortcuts here. We need to find out somewhere in between 11.15 and, and noon they're going to be done with the three activities. So we have to find out what time that is and then we can see how, what, how much time is left. So I can say that the three activities are going to take, right, it's three for eight minutes each, right? So, um, so time for the activities Time for the activities T is 8 times 3, which is 24 minutes. And so 24 minutes plus the 15, right, because it's 11.15 is when gym starts. 24 plus 15 is 39. So 39 so that's going to be 11.39 is when they're done with the activity. So this is going to be about there. And that's going to be 11.39. And we can call this, just label this 8 times 3 equals 24. Or you could just label it T since we already picked that variable. So 11.39, this is what we have to find out, the time between 11.39 and noon. And that's how long. These are the how many minutes is what we're looking for. M is what I'm going to call it. Uh, that's how much time we have to figure out the difference between 11.39 and noon. And if you marked every single minute on your timeline, you could just count it up. And that, would, that would really be the simplest way to do it. But... Um, we could just subtract because we know this whole timeline has 60 minutes in it so the whole thing is 60 minutes and I know that this part is 39 so it's 60 minus 39 is what I really have to figure out so M equals 60 minus 39 and you could do this mentally with compensation strategy that 39 is almost 40 add 1 to it so it's really 61 minus 40 that's a lot easier to do mentally that's going to leave you with 21 there are 21 minutes until lunch. A box contains 100 pens. In each box there are 28 black pens and 42 blue pens. The rest are green. Mr. Kane buys six boxes of pens. How many green pens does he have in total? So 
each box has 100 pins, right? There's a lot going on here, so I'm just going to draw one sentence at a time. There's 100 pins in that box. And now, each box, there are 38 black, 42 blue, and then the rest are green. So we have... Uh, so I'm going to draw a tape diagram for that. There's 38. Those are black. And 42 blue. And then the rest are green. G. And this whole thing adds up to 100. All right, so that can be our picture right there. And then once we know how many green pens there are in a box, we can multiply by the six boxes that Mr. Kane buys, and we can figure out how many green pens he has. So how many pens aren't green? Right, if we figure out this, then we can subtract from 100 to figure out what the green pens are. So that's 38 plus 42. And if you do this in your head, you can see it's going to be 80. And so then G, this is our equation. We have to write an equation with the letter for the unknown. G, the number of green pens in each box, is 100 minus the, the total minus the pens that aren't green. 80, which is 20 pens. 20 is really easy. Fortunately, 20 is a really easy number to work with. So now we need to figure out the total number of pens, which is the total number of pens. And you could draw another tape diagram for this because each, there's six boxes, right? And each one has 20 green pens in it. And then you're trying to figure out the total number of green pens in six boxes. So T equals 20 times 6. That's 120. Uh, not there are, but he has. Hundred twenty green pens. Greg has fifty six dollars. Tom has seventeen dollars more than Greg. Jason has eight dollars less than Tom. How much money does Jason have, and how much money do the three boys have in total? So uh, I'm going to draw a you guessed it a tape diagram, and I'm just going to start with this. Greg has fifty six dollars. And let's make a piece of tape for Greg. G for Greg, and that's fifty-six dollars. And now, now we look at Tom. Tom has more, and we know how much more. So there's fifty-six and seventeen more. And then Jason has $8 less than Tom. So Jason, we're looking at Tom's, all of Tom here, that right there. Jason has less. So I'm going to make it less. And we know it's $8 less. So this is the less, 8. 
and we have to figure out we'll call this J for Jason. So first, if we know how much Tom has, then we can figure out how much Jason has. And there are there's a shortcut to this, but since we have to figure out how much they all have in total, we have to know how much each one of them has. So we do have to figure out, eventually we are going to have to figure out how much Tom has. So Tom, let's figure out Tom first. Because J, when you figure out, to figure out how much money Jason has, it's going to be whatever Tom has minus the $8, which is the less. So we got to figure out Tom first to figure out Jason. Well, Tom has 56 plus 17. All right, 6 plus 7, that's 13, and that's 7. So Tom has $73. And then, so now we know that Jason has 73 minus 8, right, because that's just putting the 73 in place of the T for Tom, right? He's got, he's got 8 less than Tom, so 73 minus 8. And now this is where you could do this mentally with compensation, 8 is almost 10, which would be much easier to subtract, add 2 to it. So add 2 to the menu end and the subtrahend. So you're looking at 75 minus 10, much easier to do mentally, 65. And you could also do this vertically if you just really love that. and see that you can't subtract 8 from 3 so you have to decompose a 10 and then that gives me 13 minus 8 which is 5 and then 6 minus nothing is 6, 65, 6 tenths. So Jason has 65 dollars and the total how much do they have in total we can just say we have this picture up here for part A, and we're just going to use the same picture for part B. So the, the total amount, T, is going to be Greg's 56 plus Tom's uh, 73, right? That's where we figured that out there. And then plus Jason's 65. And we could just stack these all up. Vertically like that. Six and three is nine and five more is 14. And let me fix that. Sorry, that was 56. There. Uh, so, look, I don't see any easy ways to make 10 with these four numbers. So, I see uh, two sixes, right? That five and one makes a six. Two sixes is 12, and seven more is 19. Laura cuts 64 inches of ribbon into two parts and gives her mom one part. Laura's part is 28 inches long. Her mom cuts her ribbon into six equal pieces. How long is one of her mom's pieces of ribbon? So like pieces of ribbon, that's just a tape diagram because a ribbon looks like a piece of tape, which is why tape diagrams are called tape diagrams. All right, so this whole thing is 64 inches. She cuts it into two parts 
Okay, here's Laura's part, and that's 28 inches. And then her mom cuts her ribbon into six equal pieces. And how long is one of her mom's pieces of ribbon? So the pieces we need to find, P, 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 P. All right, so we could, we need to find out her mom's piece and then divide by six to find out how much is in each piece. Either that or you could just Guess you could. There's a lot of different ways you do. You could guess and check. Uh, you don't want to guess tens because that's going to be way. It's going to start with sixty. That's not going to work. So it's going to be less than. It's got got to be less than ten. And then five. If they were fives, that would be thirty. And fifty-eight. So it's going to be more. It's probably going to be. It might be six. It's going to be more than five, but less than ten. So I think it's going to be. I'm going to, I'm guessing right now that it's going to be six, but let's just see what happens. So uh, we need mom's piece, which is sixty-four minus Laura's piece, which is twenty-eight. Now, if that twenty-eight was a thirty, it would be easier to subtract. So let's make it sixty-six minus thirty mentally for 36 and then uh, so then that's yeah that's easily that's easy to divide by six so we need uh, P equals 36 divided by six P equals six so Mom's pieces of ribbon are six inches long. 